Hello to all my friends and family out there. This is just a quick update on my echocardiogram that I got today. Just wanted to give you guys an update and see how everything's going. So the results were not what we expected, uh, or not what we were hoping for, I should say. <laughs> it's it's never a good feeling when you're you're laying there shirtless uh, after the tech does your kind of echocardiogram. It takes about 20 minutes with the random things around your um, your chest. Maybe I'll show you a picture of it here. Um, and then the doctor walks in with his textbook trying to figure out exactly what's uh, what's wrong with your heart uh, as a specialist. So that was kind of disconcerting, I'll be honest. Uh, but uh, in the end, where I was confident in what he said, then I then I went and met with a heart uh, specialist, heart surgeon as well later. So um, that was just kind of the initial intro. Quick biology lesson. Uh, maybe I'll show you a picture of what my echocardiogram looked like. But basically, you got your heart. And around your heart, there's some fluid, and that fluid is contained uh, in like kind of a balloon-like surface, and that surface is called a pericardium. Now, um, typically, that fluid inside the pericardium uh, is you have about two to three tablespoons of fluid there. And uh, they found out today that I have what's called an effusion, or a, a lot more fluid than they expected. The doctor said I have a large to a very large effusion, um, which typically shouldn't be that big of a deal, but with the lymphoma, they, it's basically a suspected malignant pericardial effusion, which means they suspect that I have cancer inside that fluid around the heart and potentially in the pericardium as well. With that being said, tomorrow I will get heart surgery. Um, not full on open the chest and mess with my heart specifically as heart surgery, but uh, I am going. the doctor's going to be going in cutting my pericardium. It's called a pericardial window is the name of the surgery, where he's going to cut a little window out of that kind of skin around the balloon around the heart basically if you will uh, and to allow that fluid to drain out so he'll collect that the tissue that he takes off from the pericardium he's going to collect the tissue that drains out I'm going to have a tube kind of from my heart to the outside bottom of my chest for about one to two days depending on how much it drains um, and then from there I should be able to be healed up and be, and be good to go so that's kind of uh, the update for that overall I mean I'm not looking forward to the surgery there are some wins out of this, though, so I'm trying to find the positive light and everything we can, right? So um, I will have to do one less surgery, potentially two less procedures out of this. So the doctor is able to install the port catheter uh, as well in my chest. Uh, so I can talk about that in another video, but that's one less thing that I need to go under gen general anesthesia for, which would be good. The other thing is um, if we do find out that I do have cancer essentially around my heart as well, then... The nice thing about that is I don't need to get a bone marrow biopsy. So there's a benefit. I don't need to get a, a needle stuck in my bone and get the bone marrow sucked out because if I have cancer around my heart, it's automatically stage four, uh, pretty much as, as bad as it can get with lymphoma. Uh, so that'll kind of dictate the, the chemotherapy treatments and potentially radiation therapy uh, for the future. So uh, that's kind of where we stand. Um, not what we were hoping for, but at least we have some answers and we're going to be able to continue to press from there. So tomorrow morning, start with some heart surgery. So appreciate all the love and prayers. And again, I love you guys and I appreciate all the support. Talk to you later. Bye.